What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It. Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com. This is the Ash Said It daily podcast show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,200 episodes and half a million streams worldwide. None of this would be possible without you guys, so I thank you guys so very much. Today, I am joined by the ultimate adventurer, Jermaine Middleton. Jermaine, how are you? I'm doing well, Ash. How's it going? It's going. It's going. So far, so good, you know. Good vibrations here in the A-Town. So, Jermaine, I want to talk about this. Uh, wow, I don't even know what you say. Adventure, this 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 venture that you're venturing out to, climbing Mount Everest as the first American-born black male. Like, yeah. where where does an idea like that even come from? Uh, so, I guess you could. This might sound a little corny, but it's something I've wanted to do since I was a kid. Honestly, wow. uh, you know, I've always been adventurer, always been a daredevil type of kid. I've been climbing stuff since I was a kid, so trees or whatever. And I uh, kind of just, you know, as I got older, it became more of a real thing. And it's like, hey, I want to do this. Wow. So as you were a kid and you had this idea, this dream, and this thing that you wanted to do, what were you doing to prepare for it? Yeah, so I mean, you know, as a kid, just kind of doing the same stuff that, you know, most kids do. So going outside and playing a lot, I wasn't really much into uh, to video games, but I've always been very active outside. So, mm-hmm. you know, when I come home, just hop on the bicycle, you know, going outside and playing with the friends, whether it's football or whatever, just playing outside. And so just kind of doing that stuff and always being very active, you know, participating in different sports. Um, you know, trying new things and new activities and stuff all the time. Gotcha. So as you were doing these different sports, like none of those sports really pulled you from this uh, this dream of yours? Football, track, stuff like that? Uh, so actually, I would say that uh, when I was probably in like late elementary school, early middle school, mm-hmm. uh, that's when I got into BMX racing. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like my first dip into kind of the, you know, the less traditional sports, if you will, like the more adventure uh, geared sports. So that stuff like doing racing BMX, which is now an Olympic sport, which is cool to see, because uh, not a lot of people know about it when I was a kid. I think a lot of people still don't. But that kind of got me going on a path that was a little bit different um, from what a lot of my friends were doing as related to sports and stuff. Mm. Now, what did your family have to say about this uh this project here, Jermaine, you know, climbing Mount Everest. What, what did what did mom and pop say? Yeah, so the funny thing about that, I mean, my parents know me pretty well, my sister as well. Like, all my family and friends, I don't think there's too many people that actually know me on a personal level that were actually shocked about this idea that I had. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, everybody was really supportive, and I definitely stood behind me 100%, but not many people were shocked. You know I mean, again, I've been a daredevil since I was a kid. Yeah. And I'm always trying to push new boundaries and push myself in different ways and, and stuff like that. So whether it's, you know, skydiving or scuba diving, or whatever, like I'm just an adventure at heart. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, this is kind of a natural step in that direction. Like I said, nobody was really shocked when they heard about it. Uh, my mom, she's not super excited about it. She is on one hand, but at the same time, she's like a little uh, reluctant, uh, you know, to show that excitement. But, uh, but yeah, she's still supportive of it. I would imagine. All right, cool beans. All right, you guys, so hang tight with me for one moment. We're going to take a brief pause here. We're going to come back with more from Jermaine and more about this amazing feat that he will accomplish soon and very soon. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Did you know that some foods can cause weight gain, body aches, and extreme fatigue? These are just some of the symptoms of food intolerance. Well, what is food intolerance? Food intolerance can occur when the body cannot properly digest certain foods. This can result in acid reflux, migraines, and so many other painful issues. How do you find out what foods are causing this irritation? It's easy. Pinner Test. With half a million satisfied clients worldwide, Pinner Test is the number one way of identifying foods that may be causing discomfort. This simple at-home kit is easy to use with results usually within two weeks via email. It's that simple, all right? What are you waiting for? Go visit pinnertest.com and use my special promo code Ash Said It for your discount today. Welcome back to the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. We're chatting right now with Jermaine Middleton, the ultimate adventurer who's going to climb Mount Everest. It's just like the just even the words coming out of my mouth, Jermaine. I'm just really kind of sitting in disbelief because it sounds just absolutely bonkers. But you've got to set in your mind, it's, it's going to happen, you're going to do it, and knock it out. 
So yeah, um, definitely, definitely. you you come highly recommended. Quick shout out to our friends over there at Best Self Atlanta. Yes, Laura Downey, the managing editor, she is amazing. And she said, Ash, you have got to talk to this. You, you got to talk to Jermaine. You, you have to. You, you cannot let the year close without talking to him and hearing about this amazing feat and what she's going to accomplish. So we thank you guys for that. Now, Jermaine, how how long have you had to prepare for this this journey? Yeah, so the preparation process actually started uh, more or less this year, uh, within a okay. recent month, actually. So the climb will actually take place, the actual climb of Mount Everest actually is going to take place in next starting next April. Okay. And uh, Everest itself, that climb is going to take about 60 or so days. So it's a pretty long uh, wait, wait. journey. But, you know, again, starting now to prepare. So uh, basically going to be doing some preliminary climbs. I actually just got back from Washington State, uh, spent two weeks uh, there, just doing some training and climbing and stuff like that. I'm also headed to France on Friday to climb uh, Mont Blanc, which is the highest mountain in uh, Western Europe. And so, yeah, so the training process is going to be a year-long process. It's, you know, that's why I'm doing different things to kind of get myself mentally and physically prepared for it. So climbing a lot of mountains and uh, doing a lot of physical preparation, doing some triathlons and stuff like that along the way to get myself in the best uh, physical shape possible. So, Jermaine, you just said something that just kind of blew my mind. You just, you just kind of really okay. just blew me away. It's going to take 50 days to climb this mountain? 50? Uh, approximately yeah. 50 days. 60. Oh, yeah, well, 60. excuse the heck So somewhere in that range, yeah. So basically, uh, no. your body is not meant to be at 29,000 feet, right? So if right. you think about, for reference, right? So when you see a plane flying over Atlanta, yeah. and you look up in the sky and you see it, unless you're closer to the airport, it's a little bit lower, you're essentially looking at how high you climb right? And yeah. so, again, your body literally starts to shut down and die once you get to a certain altitude. And so the only way to prepare for that is to give your body a certain amount of time to adjust and acclimatize to that, the lack of oxygen and that, at that different, uh, the different levels of altitude. And so, basically, it just takes time. You know, it's not really yeah. um, a way to speed up that process. There are certain tools that you can use um, at home, and there are certain companies that offer those, and you can actually cut down the time some, but, you know, in the end of the day, it's, it's a time thing. It takes your body time to adjust the lack of oxygen. And that's even with using supplemental oxygen while you're on the mountain as well to help you get to the top. So, wow. yeah, so that's why it takes so long. It's not actually like we're, you know, out there climbing every single day trying to get to that altitude. Right. It's more so about letting your body, you know, adapt to the lack of oxygen. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, how many how many people are going to be on this journey with you? You can't be going by yourself. Yeah, not at all, not at all. So, <laughs> basically, with the company that I'm climbing with, which is a district consultant, okay. I believe there's going to be like eight, uh, what you call customer climbers, and those are people mm -hmm. that are, you know, being led uh, by the guide company. And then you have maybe another four or so actual guides that are leading the way and showing us, you know, what to do and everything. And then we have uh, Sherpa, and they'll be there to kind of help. Uh, they're the people that live on the mountain and live in that region of the world. And, uh, again, it's more natural for them just to be able to do all the stuff they have to do with that altitude. So they'll be helping us get up the mountain, uh, helping transport goods and that sort of thing. Gotcha. So it'll be a full team of people up there. Yeah. Okay. Now, this France trip, is this going to be your first uh, maybe, like, trial run before Everest? Uh, I don't I don't know how you would necessarily qualify a trial run, but, yeah, this is definitely the highest peak that I've climbed to date. Okay. Um, Prior to Mont Blanc is, uh, it, yeah, it's 15,700 feet, so it's a pretty high, uh, pretty high peak. Um, I've done uh, Mount Whitney last year, mm. which is the highest mountain in the lower 48, which is, uh, I think, about 14,500 feet. Wow. So, yeah. That's pretty awesome. So, yeah, we're gradually adding to it. So, I'm climbing uh, Kilimanjaro in, uh, in November, which is the highest mountain in uh, Africa. Right. And then I'm also going to climb Aconcagua in Argentina in November and December as well which is the highest mountain in, uh, in South America. Wow. Well, Jermaine, so it's kind you... It's all just kind of building up leading to that. Yeah, yeah, you are definitely motivating me. I need to step my game up, Jermaine. <laughs> I am falling behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely recommend, you know, everybody spend some time outdoors. It's not something that's super popular, you know, but once you get out there and you experience just that peace and, you know, the fresh air, uh, it's just, you know, something that improves your life, in my opinion. Wow. Last but certainly not least, Jermaine, what advice can you offer to any person that has been told that they couldn't do something? I'm sure people have laughed at you, have said, oh, you're crazy, you're out of your mind, it's impossible. 
what would you say to any person that has been discouraged because their dream was out of the box? Yeah, you, I definitely get that a lot on a regular basis. It's kind of the story of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got that, obviously, recently with the whole Everest thing. But, you know, just tell people to believe in what their dreams are. You know, mm-hmm. dare to be different, you know, dream differently, and uh, do whatever you're passionate about. And just continue to push through it and really attach yourself to the reason why you're doing what you're doing, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, this whole journey isn't just about climbing Mount Everest. Um, I've partnered with three charities in Atlanta, and so the proceeds from the climb, you know, including the cost and everything, will actually be going towards those charities. So it's not just about me getting to the top of this mountain and making a piece of history. It's about how can I use this opportunity to leverage that to, you know, bless other people. And so when you have a cause like that, you know, whatever people are telling you that's negative or goes against what you are called to do or driven to do or whatever, you have more reason to fight back. I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to do this because this isn't what black people do. You know what I mean? So right. you find reasons that are important enough to keep to push you uh, past those different roadblocks and barriers or maybe even people that say you can't do this. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Jermaine Middleton. Thank you so much. I want to say that I was the first person to interview you before you climbed Mount Everest. So we're going to get that circulating out there. And uh, much success to you, Jermaine. I want to hear about your next feat when you get back. I want to hear about your your, your next um, uh, goal that you've got set after Everest. Because I know it's going to you know continue to climb higher and higher and higher. And if people want to follow your journey, Jermaine, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so the best way to follow along is just go to the website, which is summit413.com. That's S-U-M-M-I-T, the number 413.com. Okay. You can also follow me along on Instagram at uh, summit413.com as well. Sounds like a plan. I appreciate you so very right. much, Jermaine. Much more success. and yeah, Thank you so much, Ash. Yes, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you for all of your love and support. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, Look, I'm square in the face. Tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I'm doing. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take over the world, all right? Watch me make it happen, all right? That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books, all right? Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys.